What was your most bone chilling? I have a bad feeling about this experience. I do real estate photography. One day I was alone shooting in an empty house, which is quite normal. I had this really uncomfortable feeling that I wasn't alone. I had already checked the whole house before I started taking photos, but I kept getting the feeling that someone else was there. The feeling was so strong that I had goosebumps and felt nauseous. I'm not a small guy, but I felt like a little kid scared of the dark. I decided to recheck all the rooms to ease my mind, but didn't find anything. I checked closets, bathrooms, bedrooms etc but I was definitely the only one there. As I finished shooting the last room in the house, this feeling that someone was with me was so overwhelming that I pretty much sprinted out of the house. When I took the last shot, I felt better when I got outside, but I still had an uneasy feeling. The realtor ended up pulling in the driveway as I was finishing photos of the front of the house and asked if the house cleaner did a good job. I said it looked fine to me and she went into the house with her husband to prep it for a showing. When I was shooting the backyard, I noticed them both out of the corner of my eye through a back window, but there was a third person with them. I was confused because they came alone without anyone else. Turns out the house cleaner wasn't finished before I pulled up and came in. She saw a large guy with tattoos come into the house in panic, so she jumped into the kitchen pantry and hid. By the time she realized I was the photographer, it was too late for her to come out without it being awkward, so she stayed in the pantry the whole time. I'm not sure if maybe I saw her out of the corner of my eye when walking past, or if maybe I smelled her perfume, heard her breathing, and didn't realize it, but my subconscious was screaming at me that someone was there. It was the most uncomfortable I've ever been inside a house like that before, and made for a funny story after. I lived in South Africa where home invasions were pretty brutal, grew up on a plot, and lived in the flat adjacent to the main house. One night I woke up randomly around 2am, and had this tingling feeling that something wasn't right. I opened my flat door to look outside and see if anything was going on. That feeling didn't subside, so I decided to get dresses and do a walk around the garden. Before leaving my flat something told me to peep through the door, and as I did, that I saw some guy walking around the house. I then phoned my sister who lived in the house, but no answer. I then phoned my stepmom. And after a while my sister answered which was really strange. I told my sister to wake the f up and walk around the house and make sure the doors and windows were closed as there was someone in the garden. She kept trying to blow it off and even said she'd unlock the house door so I could go inside the house. I told her that's a stupid idea and I wasn't going outside since usually burglars are armed and dangerous and I had nothing to protect myself with. My sister missed a breath during our call. Something that usually happens when one is frightened. So out of instinct I asked her if everything was alright she should say yes twice. She only said it once. Turns out a group of men had already made it in the house and they had a gun to her head telling her to convince me to leave my flat. A few seconds later the automatic light outside my flat turned on. I then told my sister it's okay and I was going to sleep. I then phoned the police and neighborhood watch which took the longest 30 minutes of my life to show up. Once I saw the police lights outside I had to make a 100 meters dash to the gate to open it up for them. I then talked them over what happened and that we should investigate the house. I walked around the perimeter with them until we found where the guys had entered. We entered the house which was totally trashed until we got to the main room where there was a blanket over the bed. I then yanked the blanket off to my find my whole family under there as they were tied up and frightened shirtless. This included my one yonis. If it weren't for my instincts they would not have hesitated to kill me and probably do worse to my family. They already poisoned my dogs. Must have been a guardian angel or something looking over my shoulder that night. It was about 9 or 10 in the evening and I was heading home from a really bad date. It was a 10 minutes walk from where I was to my home and I stopped by a red light and waited. It was in the middle of the week and on the way from my date to the red light I've met like one person. So there wasn't a lot of people out. From nowhere I got a really bad feeling. And I knew that someone was watching me. I turned around and there was a man right beside me. He stood just a bit too close. He saw that I've seen him and started talking about how nice the summer rain was. I ignored him and started walking. Although the light still was red. He started walking to. I speeded up for a bit. So did he. My fight 
flight or freeze immediately hit, and from nowhere I stopped walking, he was caught off guard, and took a few more steps, before he stopped too, he asked me why I stopped, and I almost yelled at him, that I didn't want to speak to him, that his behavior is freaking me out, and told him to keep walking, he started to argue, and I yelled just go, he started walking slowly, I stood still, watching him as he walked, the feeling in my stomach didn't leave, it actually was getting worse, he stopped by a bus stop, and for a second I breathed out, he was waiting for the bus, well, just next to the bus stop was an alley, a really dark alley, and behind it a dark parking lot, he stared at me, while he stood there, he was waiting for me, I tried to contact a friend, no answer, I hid behind some construction materials, and on the third try I managed to contact a friend, she wasn't home, and couldn't help me, she asked if there was anyone else there, and I said no, eventually there was a man and two women walking by, she told me to tell them what's happening, during this time, the guy hadn't stopped staring at me for a second, when I walked up to the group to ask, if I could walk with them, he suddenly started walking away, I was right, he was waiting for me, I walked with the group for a bit, but they were turning, left at the next red light, and I was going the other side, I thanked them for helping me, we walked our separate ways, and within seconds the guy showed up again, I froze completely and fortunately the group caught it, and ran over to me, the guy saw them, turned around and walked away, they walked me to my doorstep, and I thanked them over, and over again, I'm 100% sure, that he planned on doing something horrible to me, I'm forever thankful for these three strangers who might have saved my life that night. So this was my friend's intuition not my own but it for sure saved our lives. About a decade ago, sometime in Jan or Feb, we were standing outside in downtown Chicago smoking a cig. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, she gets this worried look on her face and says, I don't like this spot, come over here. It wasn't 3 seconds, after we took a few steps, no more than 10 feet, that this giant ice block falls off the building and shatters exactly where we had been standing, it would have crushed and killed me definitely, and her very likely had we not moved, it was so shocking, that everyone on the bustling street just stopped and stared at us mouths agape, you cold I heard a pin drop after that, it was insane, I never looked at her the same either, she says she doesn't know how but she had some sixth sense thing going on without a doubt. The day I just knew my good friend had died, I had this horrible sense of dread and overwhelming need to get to him point I was absolutely panicked like I swear I could hear a clock ticking in my head. I had been texting with him hours before and we were supposed to go cut down a Christmas tree. I had to threaten the girl whose house he was at to go back to the house and check on him or I was going to call the police. She had left him there, to go decorate it for at her mom's. I didn't have a vehicle, and had never been to her house, so I couldn't even get to him myself. I was on the phone with her, when she found him. Absolutely gutted. Managing an overpass shift at a McDonald's. Just me and another guy in the store around 2am. I notice a beat up Ford Falcon with a mismatching bonnet, hood, roll into the car park. One guy hops out and immediately starts casing the place for camera locations, and how many people are inside. This immediately raises my suspicions, but I pretend everything's cool, and serve him as normal. They must have got, spooked cause they get in the car and drive off, after getting their food. Once they're clear, I called police, and told them what's happened along with the number plate and vehicle description. A few hours later police come in and say they've pulled the Ford over and found a kilo of meth and several semi-auto firearms on board. Later on they admitted to scouting the place for another couple to rob us later that night. This isn't as NSFW as others, but I think about it a lot. Country lanes in the UK are pretty narrow and have lots of blind bends. I was driving down a lane and there was a cyclist in front of me, in the middle of the road, not wearing a helmet and heading toward a completely blind bend. I suddenly thought, if a car swings around that bend they are going to smash into the cyclist and pin him to my car. It was like a backward final destination vision. I couldn't hear or see another car, but I saw this accident so vividly in my mind. I immediately slammed on my brakes, honked my horn, and pulled over. 
the poor cyclist guy shat himself and stumbled to the hedges. Mere seconds later some idiotic teenager come speeding out of the blind corner and missed us by inches. If we were still in the road, this guy would have plowed straight through the cyclist and into my car. I completely freaked out, to the point the cyclist came over to calm me down. I don't remember much, but I know I was saying back quote you were dead over and over again. I'm not a religious person at all, but that's the closest I've come to believing in some kind of divine intervention. It was the day before my wedding, and I went on a walk around my very safe neighborhood. I had my headphones in, and the music playing loudly. There were cars parked here and there, up and down the long street. The houses in this neighborhood have relatively large plots of land so there is some space between the houses. About halfway down the street I came to a car that had been sat parked for at least the 5 minutes it took for me to get to it. As I passed it, I noticed there were 4, maybe 5, males in their early 20s. I didn't think anything of it. I walked maybe 50 or so more feet and got this awful feeling in my stomach. I turned around to find that they had crept their car up so that they were literally right behind me. I hadn't heard the car because my headphones were in by absolute sheer luck. I spotted an older man and woman working in their garden about 5 houses down, big plots of land, so they were a bit away, I booked it to them, and asked if I could just wait with them, the older guy went over to the car, and asked them what they were doing, and they said they were there, to do some yard work for one of the neighbors, and pointed to the house they were now parked in front of, not the house, that they had been sitting in front of before, the guy told them he didn't believe them, and to take a hike or he'd call the police. The guy then told me that the house they had been originally sitting in front of before was of a neighbor who was out of town. Because there were 5 or so houses down, this couple hadn't noticed the car or me before I came running up to them. I often think back on that incident and feel very strongly that had I not gotten that awful feeling that compelled me to turn around. And if that couple had not been in their front yard for me to quickly spot, there would have been a different ending to this story in the day before my wedding at that. Okay I have two of these, but the first is, why I'll always trust my gut. When I was little I always used to sleep over at my cousin's house who had an awesome wooden bunk bed, that I would sleep on the bottom bunk. When I was 7 I went over for another sleepover, we eye Chinese food with my aunt and uncle then me, and my cousin stayed up late playing video games, before going to bed. When I was little I used to fall asleep right away, and sleep deeply. My family still jokes that not even a car going through the house could wake me up. Anyways sometime after I've fallen asleep I wake, because I have this ridiculous feeling. That I have to roll over. I didn't want to because I was comfortable. And sleeping how I normally do in the middle of the bed with my foot hanging off. I kept arguing with what felt like myself over rolling over until finally I did. But apparently it wasn't enough. Because then I had the urge to literally cuddle as tight as I can against the wall. Since I had already rolled over I figured why not. As I'm trying to press myself as hard as possible against the wall the bunk bed collapses and a broken metal bar goes straight through the bed. Where I had been sleeping. I was stuck. Somehow unharmed. In that little space against the wall. Until my uncle could cut me out. My cousin had fallen from the top bunk when it collapsed. But was also unharmed. Next happened when I was 16 in the summer. I grew up in a super small town and used to walk or bike everywhere with my dog and I was usually alone. I had the day off from work so I took a book and walked with my lab 4 miles to one of my favorite lakes and laid down at the beach to read a book and tan while my dog played in the water. After a few hours of being there I noticed a rowdy group of guys, one who looked a bit familiar. It was a weekday so there was only me, my dog and a fisherman at the landing with these guys. I tried to ignore them, but noticed they kept looking over at me or whispering to each other. Then my dog who usually will stay in the water the full time I'm there came over and laid in between me and this group. I got a bad feeling from them and decided to cut my day short and go home. I grabbed my stuff and started to walk out of there like nothing happened and this group starts to follow me. Not only do I have a bad feeling, but I can tell my dog is freaked out because she keeps looking behind me and growling. This group is getting louder behind me and somehow keeping up with me which is a feat because I'm a fast walker so I know they're doing this on purpose. I'm trying to think of a way out of this situation knowing in the middle of the week I won't get much help from neighbors and no one's really around. 
So then I start to think on the one kid that looked familiar and it suddenly hits me. I know him. So I suddenly spin around and address him by name and tell him I used to change his diapers which causes his friends to burst out laughing. I allow them close enough to walk with me to try and take control of the situation and ask him about his family and brother. They ask me what I'm doing that day and I still feel super creeped out and my dog still won't come near us so I lie and say my brother is just up the road and I'm going to meet him and I throw in that I'll hang back and let them walk ahead because my dog is clearly uncomfortable which I lie again and tell them she was abused by a man and hates men. They say they are going back to the beach and turn around and leave. One year later I hear about a gruesome murder the next town over. This kid and his friends broke into his 75 year old grandpa's house, robbed him and brutally beat and tortured him to death. The kid I knew was only 14. The friends he was with ranged from 16 to 23. I don't know if they were planning on doing anything to me that day, but I will always trust my gut and have sense.